hello everybody we are gathered here today to open Paige's exam results from september 2023 her sixth actuarial exam season she took sp7 she took cp1 for the second time to be honest for this results day i kind of wish i hadn't told everyone about my exams i wish everyone could just forget i took the exams at all because i do expect two fails i know it's not a very positive mindset but the exams went badly. Go and watch my exams vlog if you want to see how badly they went. I also did edit out a lot of my complaining in that exams vlog. That exams vlog would have been twice the length if I've left in all of me moping around because I thought the exam had gone wrong and I'd run out of time. Yada, yada, yada. And since the exams, I think I have kind of made peace with the fact that two fails is okay. They take a few months to get the results out to us, so I don't even remember what was in the exam papers now. I sat them in September, it's now December. I obviously care a lot about these exams. As time goes on, I want to pass them more and more because qualification just feels within reach, and that's the end goal. I want to qualify as an actuary. But, you know, exams aren't the be-all and end-all. Plenty of people fail these exams. I've said this many times before, it is normal to fail actuarial exams, as horrible as it feels at the time. Lots of people I know, my colleagues and my friends have all been asking after my exam results recently, asking me, Paige, how did you do? Have you found out yet? So I know I'm going to get lots of questions in the next few days as to how I got on. And just the bit I'm dreading is having to tell people that they went badly, if they went badly. But let's, let's stop, let's stop talking about how I'm going to cope with the fails until I've actually got them. Let's open up these results. They have been released online as usual at 6 p.m it's now past eight o'clock because i've commuted home from london today if i've got eye bags under my eyes it's because i've been working really hard over the last few days i got up super early as well to get to london it's all go it's all go life of a student actuary let's go to the ifa website and yeah i think the thing with these results is i actually don't really want them <laughs> When I'm not expecting good things, I don't really want to open them. I'd rather just live without knowing. In the last few months, I haven't studied. My excuse being I don't know how I did in my exams, but once I get my results, I've really got to face up to what I do next. Also, by the way, if you've had your own results, comment below if you feel comfortable to let me know how you got on. Share your feelings about it. If you passed, congrats. If you failed, you'll get it next time. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. It's cause I care. It's cause I care. The results of the September 2023 exam session have been released. If you sat an exam in the September 2023 session, you can download your exam results letter by clicking the link below. I think when I click this link, I'm gonna get the results for both in a single letter. Let's go. Let's go people. Oh my god. I actually want to cry. I passed them both. I passed them both. When I tell you all, I genuinely was not expecting that. Oh my god. That's madness. That is madness. I now look like an idiot because I have been going around telling everyone I'm pretty sure I've got two fails. But I genuinely did think that and I have had a run of fails. The last couple of exam sittings haven't been the most successful for me, as some of you may know if you've been following along. So this, oh, this is so nice. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is the best Christmas present. My year has been made. These exams take a lot of work, a lot of past pra paper practice, a lot of grinding and i'd resigned myself to having to do that all over again for these two papers but i passed them i passed them both so i got 69 in sp7 that's my highest mark i've got in any exam for a while sp7 is general insurance reserving and capital modeling principles which is the area i work in I got 64 in cp1 which is the one that i actually care about more because cp1 Oh my god. I cried last sitting when I failed this one. It covers pensions, it covers life insurance, it covers investment, which are all not areas I work in. So 
it was a bit of a challenge learning those and also just learning exam technique and what they're looking for in the mark scheme i can't believe that i'm having to look at it closely i haven't got my glasses on and i'm like what if i've mistaken an f for a p but it is a p it's a p this makes me an associate of the institute of faculty of actuaries a i a that's me because i passed all of the core exams in fact i'm going to put up on screen a diagram that shows all of the actuarial exams because i showed this in a video a few months ago and people said it was very useful in understanding what i'm actually doing so i'm aware a lot of my viewers are not in the actuarial circle and when i say words like cp1 sp7 you're like page what the hell is going on so here is a diagram the ones that start with a c are all core principles core practices cp1 was my last one of those so i am through with the cause which makes me an associate but it doesn't really hold a lot of weight to be honest the, the associate qualification isn't what everyone aims for it's not what employers necessarily look for you're considered a qualified actuary or a chartered actuary as they're calling it these days if you're a fellow of the ifoa and to do that you need to pass all your core principles core practices and three specialist exams. SP7 was the first specialist exam I've sat. I've passed it, so I've got two more guys. Qualification is within reach. There may come a day when Paige is no longer studying, which is a weird thought, I'll be honest with you. Me not taking exams, that's random. Can't imagine that. Anyway, I'm gonna ring my mum and my dad because I'm so hyped. <coughs> Hello. <coughs> I've opened my results. Oh my god, oh my god. How do you think I did? Um, I think she... I'm hoping you pass. Oh my god, both of them! Both of them! I can't believe it! Oh my god. Thank you! I'm so happy. Well done! This is like all I wanted for Christmas. And I got it. Is it ten down now? 11 down, two to go. Two to go! I could do it next sitting. Sorry if I've been a little bit overly excited in this video, but I just, having taken these exams for three years now, over three years, I'm just so invested and I thought I was gonna be retaking these and do you know, there's probably not a lot in it, you know? For CP1, I got 64, last sitting I got 59. It's only five marks more than I got last sitting. So much of it is about where the past mark is, a little bit of luck with the questions. I've been on both sides of it. I failed last time round, so anyone out there who's had recent fails in exams, I feel you, I get you. Go for it again next time and don't give up because it pays off and you do finally get there. I'm just gonna open Reddit. Reddit is the place to be as a student actuary. And as normal, there is a thread where people post about their exam results. Oh, it's just so heartwarming. There's people posting on here, passing their final exams. They've passed SA2 and they've qualified. They've passed SP7 and now they're an FIA. Oh, it's just so lovely. CP1 pass mark was 57. So it's gone back down. I'm not sure what the pass mark for SP7 is, but it looks like it's over 60. They're gonna release the results breakdowns tomorrow, but this sitting, I'm not that interested. I don't really care to know how close I was to the boundary and how it could have gone very wrong all over again. <laughs> Let's take the win and move on to the next sitting. Next up is SA3 and SP8. Both specialist subjects, both in general insurance. They're gonna be tough. They are gonna be tough exams. If I can pass them both next sitting, I will qualify in July 2024. I just feel so motivated now to stick my head in a book for the next few months. I want this so bad. I've just booked a tutorial for SA3 because I wasn't booking it before results day because I just wasn't confident on getting passes and I wasn't sure I was going to take SA3 next sitting if I had a load of resets. But now we're definitely plowing ahead with it. I want an in-person tutorial so I've just sent off my application for that. The in-person tutorials I find so useful. Shout out to my tutor actually for SP7, past first time. So 
thank you they taught me well gosh that was a lot of excitement for one evening and i'm so hungry guys it's 20 to 9 i haven't had dinner yet i barely had lunch because i was working through and preparing slides for a meeting and then tesco ran out of meal deals so i am starving right now so i'm gonna run and make myself some food thank you all for watching please give the video a like subscribe to my channel follow my instagram and i'll see you guys soon with another video bye